Welcome to the third day of conferences and amazing networking in this virtual summit, Shaping Sustainable Cities in Latin America, that the alumni, the, 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 AA, the association have organized for us. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce you, uh, Professor Bernhard Müller from the Technical University of Dresden. Um, Professor oh. Müller is a senior professor at the Faculty of Environmental Science of TU Dresden in Germany until mid-2019. He was the director of the Leibniz Institute of Ecological, Urban and Regional Development and professor for spatial development at the TU Dresden. He has worked in urban sustainability for many years and has engaged in international projects as researcher and as a consultant and has participated as well in elaborating a new urban agenda. So it's with great pleasure that I introduce uh, Professor Müller. He will be talking about the definition of what a, a green city is. So Professor Müller, the Bühne gehört Ihnen. <laughs> yeah, herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, welcome uh, everyone uh, to uh, this uh, uh, great conference. Uh, I really congratulate the organizers to have put together such an interesting uh, program with many facets. And uh, let me share my screen uh, so that we can start as well with the presentation. Uh, I will talk about the green city and uh, ask the question whether the, uh, there is, uh, this is already we are on the right track or whether there is a real great transformation still ahead of us and uh, how we can get there and uh, what has to be done. Uh, so um, uh, when we uh, talk about um, uh, shaping sustainable cities in Latin America, uh, of course, uh, we um, have to ask ourselves, uh, wouldn't it be more important to talk about urban poverty, for instance, than green cities? Yeah? And green city have nice parks and uh, gardens and so on, uh, something uh, for the rich maybe. So urban poverty uh, seems to be a problem. Uh, or if we uh, look at the other point, um, uh, there is the question of uh, migration uh, in many countries. Uh, I'm at the moment in uh, Chile and uh, uh, there is a big uh, wave of migration uh, to the country and in some uh, places uh, it shows xenophobia as well, like in Germany, like in many uh, European countries as well. So wouldn't it be impo more important to talk about that uh, topic or uh, the question of inequality and the territorial divide. When we talk about the territorial divide in Latin American cities, um, maybe Colombia, maybe uh, other countries, um, you can rather well distinguish. Uh, if uh, you tell uh, someone where you live, uh, the person will uh, tell you who you are in a way or recognize that. So social justice, dignity, equity, new society, the call for new society, um, Organizamos y luchar para construir una nueva sociedad uh, was uh, written uh, in one of the demonstrations uh, here in Chile uh, recently. Uh, and uh, then accessibility um, to uh, resources, uh, water, for instance, which is uh, sometimes private, other uh, issues are uh, pending. And if we look at parks, I mentioned already, um, then uh, we see we could have the feeling. Um, they are a placebo in a way uh, for all these other uh, much more profound problems. They may be even understood as eco islands or educational opportunities in a way. This is a picture from uh, the Botanic Garden, a very famous uh, and, and, and great uh, area in uh, Bogota, which is of course not a placebo, but uh, if we look at it from a systematic uh, point of view and we see that uh, maybe um, uh, these activities, educational opportunities, they have to be uh, taken up. Or if we look at nature reserves, the nature reserves uh, around and in cities are usually very much in danger. This is uh, Van der Hamen uh, Nature Reserve in Bogota as well in Colombia. I took some uh, examples from Colombia uh, as it, uh, the, the, the conference is organized by uh, Colombian colleagues. Uh, and uh, this uh, nature reserve is very much under pressure 
because of the intensive um, horticulture with rose production, flower production close to the airport for the international markets. Uh, and uh, the greenhouses, uh, which you can see on the pictures here, uh, there is, of course, some uh, uh, let's say influx of uh, housing, of urban development and agriculture. And uh, for planning, it's rather difficult to uh, safeguard and to secure uh, such uh, areas. And if we talk about urban green in uh, many of our cities, then it's a matter of um, yeah, the more affluent uh, people, they have big gardens, they can afford uh, to have uh, green environments, whereas the uh, poorer people, uh, they live in uh, under different uh, 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 circumstances. And if we look at um, uh, the, uh, let's say, encroachment of uh, rather dangerous areas by um, uh, housing by urban development, and then the uh, construction of streets uh, vertical to the uh, to the slopes or to, uh, along the slopes. Uh, then uh, we are producing currents uh, during the um, rainy season, uh, and uh, usually uh, those people who are affected are the poor ones. So there is a, a big social divide as well. Uh, if we talk about uh, green areas in cities. And then not to forget uh, urban transport and pollution, for instance. Of course, um, our cities are famous uh, for that. Uh, also in Latin America, we see here uh, the uh, uh, public transport systems uh, in uh, different cities in Medellin and uh, in Bogota, which uh, have been uh, praised uh, internationally. Uh, for their innovation. And if we look at uh, housing, the housing stock, uh, then we have to ask, is this as well part of the green city? Uh, because uh, the old housing stock, which you see on the lower part in the middle, um, we, we see that the building quality is rather poor, uh, that a lot of um, uh, renovation would have to be done uh, to make cities uh, more sustainable. Uh, of course, we have uh, green building councils in almost all Latin American countries, uh, and uh, there are good examples as well, as you see on the right side uh, below, but of course there are uh, areas, uh, the, 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 the huge areas which have been created uh, during the past decades, uh, they are mainly in a poorer, a much poorer state. So what do I want to talk about in uh, my uh, presentation uh, today? Uh, in the next 40 minutes, uh, it's uh, about uh, the green city. What is the green city? Um, it, it's a glittering term in a way. The great transformation, what does that mean? Uh, and then uh, if we look at the, uh, so, uh, the sustainable development goals and the new urban agenda, um, could they be elements of a new so global social contract uh, where green cities play a big role? Uh, I had the pleasure and honor to um, participate in the elaboration of the new urban agenda, so uh, I can uh, joy, I can uh, share some of my own experience here. And then um, the, the uh, fourth part of the presentation will look at green cities on the move, the need for more urban living labs uh, and good, good case, good practice examples and so on, and then finally we draw some conclusions. So let us start with the first part, uh, the green city as a glittering term. In many cases, we can see that even in the beginning of the, of the 20th century or end of the 19th century, um, green, the term green and nature were taken uh, in the way of an urban biomimicry. What does it mean? It means that we follow in the way principles of nature but uh, with some different contents. If you see this uh, uh, drawing by Wilhelm Seidensticker, one of the um, early planners in Germany, uh, then you see that uh, his idea of creating a city uh, was following uh, the uh, construction of a plant. Or Fritz Schumer, a very, very famous um, uh, urban uh, planner in Germany, uh, who was very much behind uh, Hamburg, he um, de developed a, 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 a representation, schematic representation of the future development of Hamburg uh, 
uh, with these feathers yeah uh, coming out of a um, uh, of, 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 of a, a central uh, body. Uh, and if we look at uh, current examples, uh, for instance, uh, uh, in Abuja, in Nigeria, or in other countries, we could take other examples as well, uh, we uh, see that um, uh, the planners, they try to uh, follow some kind of designs and urban forms uh, like um, in nature. So this is urban biomimicry. It doesn't mean too much uh, in uh, terms of green uh, city. Uh, then we could understand green cities as parks and gardens. I mentioned it in the beginning. And of course, uh, this has a long tradition. Uh, if we look at uh, London Hyde Park, for instance, it's documented uh, around uh, the year two, uh, 1000. It was fenced especially for hunting, uh, so an aristocratic area in a way uh, for the wealthy uh, people in 1536, but it was open to the public already in 1637. And this happened to many other areas in uh, Europe as well. Here you see one picture down and uh, at the bottom uh, of Großer Garten in Dresden in my own uh, city, uh, which uh, are now lungs of the uh, of the urban uh, fabric. And of course, uh, we have other movements like allotment gardens, uh, small gardens, uh, which you can find in different uh, places. And many cases when uh, uh, people come um, from abroad and uh, we pass by these allotment gardens, they say, oh, we didn't know that you have slum areas in Dresden. They look like that, but uh, they are just the weekend uh, places like Dacha in, in, in Eastern uh, Europe and uh, Russia uh, for uh, fun and um, for uh, having a green environment, uh, which people do not have. And green, the green city and green in the city can be just decoration. Uh, here are two pictures from uh, China. Uh, in new urban developments, they usually uh, put a lot of uh, trees and uh, green and uh, flower areas, uh, all well managed and uh, uh, very nice uh, to see. But if we look at um, terms at, at this at, in terms of uh, biodiversity, for instance, uh, we can say it's not uh, very um, uh, valuable. And uh, the other example which I put here is from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, which is the capital of that state. Uh, here you see an, a nice green area, but uh, you may wonder uh, why uh, these trees are in pots. Uh, and indeed it's in pots. Uh, this is the, the, the simple reason is that formerly there was a shopping center at this place. Uh, and uh, this um, in the way of the, let's say, uh, decrease of the value of the city center. Uh, the, the shopping center was uh, demolished, and, um, and then uh, and there was a park uh, made, but uh, they did not take off uh, the, um, the parking below. Uh, so if you go just uh, a little bit below uh, this uh, surface, then you're in a, just in a parking garage. Uh, so um, there are other green infrastructure, for instance, uh, could be the green uh, city, uh, usually as well very much along uh, roads, uh, like in these examples, but as well uh, the interconnection between uh, major green areas. Green city could be the put emphasis on protection, on resilience uh, of um, a city, uh, for instance, with regard to floods. Uh, so this is again a picture from my uh, city in Dresden, uh, the floodplain. Uh, there was a, an early, um, uh, early regulation in uh, the end of the, eight, of the 19th century uh, to keep this area, very worthwhile area, free from building uh, the whole floodplain, uh, you see it like a, um, a, a big a green band uh, going along the river uh, through the center of the city, uh, which is, of course, uh, now uh, used very much by the people. You see a picture here. Um, and this is what we would call ecosystem services of green spaces. Uh, there's a multifunctional use. You can use it for biodiversity. You can 
have the function of recreation. You can have events there and many other issues uh, right in the uh, center uh, of Dresden here. Uh, but ecosystem services concerning provisioning, regulating cultural um, uh, services uh, regarding security, uh, resilience, as I mentioned already, um, basic material for good life, um, health, and uh, good social relations um, could um, um, be at the background. The green city could be understood as an integrative concept, as you see it here, uh, with integrated urban development uh, concepts and the embeddedness of cities in regions uh, through a regional plan, for instance. But in many cases, we see uh, that uh, these uh, eco or green cities are often uh, seen as um, eco islands or have to be seen as eco islands um, because the industry around uh, these areas, here are two pictures from China, uh, has not uh, too much uh, changed. Uh, and uh, maybe you create an eco island, uh, but it is not linked uh, to the uh, neighboring uh, areas. I mentioned already green buildings and uh, green neighborhoods. Uh, there are meanwhile many initiatives worldwide uh, the, uh, to, to, to certify, uh, to uh, establish uh, uh, standards as well for green building. Uh, so the schemes from the United States, from uh, Great Britain, they are very famous. There's a framework uh, from the European Union. And I think one of the most advanced ones is the uh, one from uh, Germany, which does not look only into green buildings, but as well in green neighborhoods. And uh, here we see not only the material and green roofs, for instance, green facades, but in, it includes as well uh, such aspects like the process, procedural quality, the question who has been uh, participating in the decision-making processes uh, and so on. So I think very important uh, issues uh, to be uh, taken up. The Green City as a planning approach, the compact city and the ecological network. This is the uh, slogan of the Dresden Landscape Plan. You see here that uh, there is a possibility to combine a compact city with dense uh, uh, population and building uh, situation uh, and a network of green areas, not along the roads, but along water streams, along other uh, green um, areas, uh, agricultural areas even, and so on. So it sometimes takes a little bit of innovation and uh, thinking in uh, developing uh, such um, uh, schemes. It could be the green city has the facet of uh, community building. Uh, here you see community gardens in uh, different cities, uh, which are becoming more and more popular. Or the question of action programs. Here are two cases, Vancouver in Canada and Freiburg in Germany. Uh, which uh, the cities which have uh, established such action programs, uh, Vancouver uh, taking the decision more than 15 years ago to be one of the greenest cities in the world by 2020. And they put uh, 10 goals and a monitoring concept for that, the same for the city of Freiburg. Uh, I do not uh, want to go into details, but um, the, each of these goals and uh, the statements is very well monitored uh, annually. It could be a political concept as well, the green city. A look at this here, uh, those who are familiar with Germany, of course, uh, Stuttgart, Stuttgart 21, the, um, uh, the, the construction of um, an addition uh, to the main train station, uh, which uh, costed for some uh, time, a lot of uh, green area in the central part of the city uh, led to a huge um, up, uh, uprise of the population and demonstrations against that. Or look at um, the um, one of the airports in, uh, in Berlin, which was closed several years ago. And um, uh, instead of um, taking this area for new housing development, uh, the population came up with a public vote uh, to keep this area as an open space. And for instance, there is uh, public gardening activities and many other recreational activities. So the city, the government, they could not make 
a decision uh, to give this to urban development or uh, housing development. Green city as a lifestyle concept as well. Uh, so know your farmer and you know your food. So regional production, urban agriculture uh, may become uh, very important. One of the uh, big and um, prestigious, um, uh, meanwhile, uh, examples comes from Italy um, in the Cita Slow, the slow city uh, with slow food and closed uh, production circles. And finally, uh, we look at technology and innovation. Smart cities um, are in a way very often connected uh, with the concept of the green city or the eco city. And a very final one, uh, which uh, I would like to go on a little bit more uh, on is uh, the uh, social reform concept. So if we look at uh, the mid of the 19th century in the um, phase of industrialization, we saw the extreme densities in uh, European cities. Barcelona with 85,000 inhabitants per square kilometer. London, 40,000, Paris, 37, Berlin, even 20,000. And if we compare with what we have nowadays, you see some figures uh, below, we see that nowhere in the world we uh, would reach that. And the housing conditions, which you see on the uh, picture, uh, on the pictures here on this slide, uh, they show you that uh, uh, cities, of course, in the wake of the industrialization, were places of, of opportunities, but as well, places of misery. And this was um, taken up by uh, several people uh, who were very important uh, for urban uh, development and uh, the idea of developing uh, more green cities. So one of the first one, one of the founders of urbanism as well, uh, was Ilde von Cerda in uh, Spain, um, who um, made the urban expansion plan in Barcelona based on very three principles uh, that air, sun, and natural light should be uh, in all dwellings, that there was an egalitarian desire for quality services in all city districts and mobility and ease of communication. So to say, one of the first green cities in a more comprehensive way. Ebenezer Howard, uh, at the end of the century, uh, with the garden city, so living and working in the smoke yesterday, today is living uh, in the suburbs, working in the smoke, and tomorrow living and working in the sun in Welvin Garden City, which was one of the first ones and all. And um, if you come, if you happen to come to Greece and you will see um, and be able to visit uh, the first garden city in uh, Germany, which is uh, Hellerau, and uh, you have here some examples. So. The, usually the concept was linked to um, activities of uh, industrial activities, uh, decent housing with gardening facilities uh, for the everyday uh, production, then uh, some cultural activities as well, and new and innovative um, uh, uh, buildings and uh, design. And here, have some images, um, city images by Richard Register. And why Richard Register is important as well for the green city, he was, so to say, the founder of the concept of eco cities. And um, he created in 1975 the NGO in Berkeley, Urban Ecology. Uh, and uh, since 1990, then uh, it, it grew. And since 1990, uh, there have been. Um, Eco City World Summits uh, in 2022, that will be the 14th edition. And they put 10 principles uh, to build eco cities together in 1996 uh, and published it in, 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 in this book, a uh, very seminal book, uh, which was uh, as well tra uh, translated into many languages. And these principles, you see, if you talk about an eco city or green city, uh, you see that it's much more than parks and gardens. Uh, land use priorities, transportation uh, priorities, damage to urban environments and their recreation, uh, the mixed housing, social justice, local agriculture, recycling, innovative appropriate technology, uh, businesses, uh, ecologically conscious economic activity, consumption, and awareness of the people as 
um, principles. And this leads me to the question, what is the great transformation? What does it mean? Of course, if we talk about the great transformation, we uh, have to go to a book uh, of, uh, by Karl uh, Polanyi, uh, who has a uh, Hungarian background. Uh, he had to emigrate to the United States uh, in the uh, 30s. And he wrote this uh, book, The Great Transformation, Political and Economic uh, Origins of Our Time. And he um, worked in, in different fields like economic history, anthropology, sociology, uh, historical sociology, and social philosophy. And he, uh, from historical perspectives, he um, tried to explain the, um, let's say, uh, situation, how it developed um, and, and how our societies uh, came up uh, during the industrialization um, uh, process. But if we look at a more recent uh, concept, uh, then we have to go to the German Advisory Council on Global Change in uh, 2011. They published a book, World in Transition, a Social Contract for Sustainability. And uh, if, you, if you compare those who uh, major German, if you um, compare the two titles, the English titles talks about sustainability. The German uh, one uh, talks about the great transformation, the große transformation. And uh, they are asking uh, this advisory council ask for a new social contract for the great transformation sustainability, uh, the need uh, for the post fossil nuclear metabolism and economic strategy. And they gave as well 10 concrete packages of measures uh, to accelerate uh, restructuring. And they say the modern era's global crisis can only be overcome through a profound shared awareness of low carbon value creation and sustainable development. So a totally new concept in uh, our urban uh, development. And this was followed five years later by another uh, very interesting um, book, uh, of the same Advisory Council on Global Change, this time with different members, uh, which uh, talks about humanity on the move, unlocking the transformative power of cities. And uh, on the first, um, in the first part, it talks about the century of cities, the success or failure of the transformation towards sustainability will be cited in cities because the urban population, uh, more than half of the urban population, is living in cities already now, and it will grow and grow uh, in the coming decades. And they develop a normative compass for urban development following this uh, transformation uh, concept. Uh, then uh, they develop demands on the urban transformation regarding uh, infrastructure, urban infrastructure, the quality of life, and environment protection. And at the end, uh, they talk about elements of a social contract for the urban uh, transformation. We come back to uh, that later. There are some elements of the social contract, like I don't go into all the details here. You can read it uh, with much more, uh, in a much more calm way um, concerning polycentric responsibility architecture, transformative action fields in cities with uh, mobility, the urban form, and so on and uh, a normative compass uh, controlling, uh, uh, for instance, ensuring inclusion, social inclusion. And the final, um, the most recent book is The Great Transformation and Introduction into the Art of Social Change by Uwe Schneiderwind, uh, who is a former president of the Wuppertal Institute for Climate, Environment and Energy, and who is now the Lord Mayor of City of Wuppertal and uh, implementing uh, his ideas in a way uh, and he says, the great transformation describes a massive ecological, technological, economic, institutional, and cultural upheaval process at the beginning of the 21st century. And he is very positive. He says, the great transformation is possible. Uh, because, and this comes from the uh, book in 2011, uh, the barriers um, can be overcome. Uh, past dependencies, for instance, the argument, we cannot do it, we are a developing country, we cannot do it because uh, we have developed uh, so far in this and this direction, we cannot change. Uh, so this is an argument which I hear very often uh, when talking about this topic, 
uh, or uh, the, there are favorable uh, factors as well uh, with um, uh, much more um, awareness of the need for global uh, transformation. And uh, as well, uh, the, uh, the idea is if we want to go get to a low carbon society, here the green path of this, um, of this uh, scenarios, uh, then uh, we have to support niche players uh, who can become change agents, uh, mainstreaming their activities. And this needs, of course, a proactive uh, state and an in, in, uh, encouraging a state as well. So let us look at the, SD, the sustain, sustainable development goals and the new urban agenda. Can they be uh, elements of a new global social contract? I think, yes, 2015, 2016 were decisive years for the city of the future uh, with the sustainable development goals, especially in uh, 2015, but as well other agreements, the Paris Agreement, COP21, for instance, uh, with the Sendai Agreement on risk management, uh, risk reduction, disaster risk reduction, and especially in 2016, the new urban agenda, uh, which uh, put a um, new uh, path, especially uh, for uh, the uh, urban areas. If we look at the sustainable development goals, we have for the first time in such an international agreement uh, of that uh, level, uh, the uh, importance of cities acknowledged. And um, with this sustainable development goal number 11, which reads, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And the nice thing here is that uh, for this um, uh, goal, uh, specific targets were uh, developed and indicators as well. So the indicators which, which allow a monitoring, a constant monitoring of where we are, where we stand, where we have to go to. And this is uh, for only, this is here um, for the, um, uh, goal number 11, but it's done for all the other sustainable development goals as well. If we look at the new urban agenda, uh, we have um, something different. Um, there are the principles and commitments, uh, for instance, and there are three very important principles and commitments, which are always um, or very often uh, mentioned in international statements. Leave no one behind is one the social uh, goal, the sustainable and inclusive urban economics, the economic goal, and the environmental sustainability. And uh, we, um, we're sure that we need a paradigm shift. We need a paradigm shift if we want to get to a sustainable future of uh, cities. And uh, the new urban agenda uh, as well formulated the Quito implementation plan for the new urban agenda transformative committees for uh, commitments for sustainable urban development, then uh, principles for the effective implementation and uh, follow up and review as well. And of course, it was um, not possible to reach in this international agreement what, for instance, uh, the uh, German Advisory Council um, would have been able uh, to reach. Uh, so their, uh, their critique uh, is um, uh, very justified. Uh, there are substantial deficits of the new urban agenda, which need to be overcome during its implementation. They say it lacks a long-term vision and concrete targets, monitor, monitorable targets, uh, importing, uh, important for uh, measuring the success. And environment, mental and climate protection appear only erratically in the agenda, which on this issue falls far behind other international agreements like the Paris Agreement and so on. But we have to see that the perspective was as well a little bit different. Let me look at some examples uh, concerning uh, cities. And um, uh, of course, we can look at the classic cases of eco cities, Masta and Abu Dhabi uh, is always mentioned. Uh, uh, a uh, development uh, by Lord Norman Foster, a very um, famous uh, British uh, architect uh, and his company, uh, Zero Carbon, Zero Waste City, one of the first examples which was developed. Um, and uh, 
still not finished because uh, it was much too ambitious uh, to uh, be uh, implemented in the uh, given time frame, which was originally until 2016. Now uh, they talk about 25. Some uh, project uh, like this uh, personal rapid transport, you see uh, one of the modules on the right side, uh, was shelved uh, because they uh, could not be implemented because of financial uh, reasons. Another example is Songdo in South Korea, which is a one of the classic examples when we talk about eco-cities, I remind you the concept of um, uh, Richard Register, uh, who uh, was behind this idea, so classic eco-city, uh, Songdo, close to Seoul, it's at the outskirts of Seoul, close to the airport as well, uh, was six square kilometers reclaimed land, uh, and um, it uh, provides uh, uh, let's say, space for 70,000 inhabitants with, uh, for instance, innovative uh, uh, garbage collection. So the green um, garbage collector, which you see there is, you can open uh, this uh, system with your code, uh, put in your garbage, and then there is an under pressure um, uh, uh, tube, which uh, brings uh, this, uh, brings your garbage to the main garbage uh, site. Or, the necessity of strong leadership. Uh, take the case of Tirana in Albania. Uh, the now president, when he became um, mayor of uh, Tirana, he um, uh, tried to abolish all the illegal uh, housing and commercial activities. So we see two examples within 10 years, the city uh, image uh, changed completely from illegal housing or uh, illegal commercial areas uh, to the uh, re-established riverbank park or the old uh, central park of the city. As well, the industries are engaging in the green city. Uh, for instance, Siemens, which is of course a big uh, infrastructure and service provider and therefore has a lot of interest in uh, new developments uh, as well as technological developments. Uh, and uh, they have, uh, you see here on the right side, the cities which they uh, put in uh, to their studies uh, some years ago. And on the left side, uh, you see the uh, different um, uh, components which they evaluate, CO2, uh, energy, buildings, transport, waste and land use, uh, water, air quality, and environmental governance. So what are the, let's say, interlinkages and the cooperation and participation structures uh, in a city to make it a green. So you see rather comprehensive, um, uh, comprehensive uh, approach. And uh, wherever you come from, you see the results from uh, these cities uh, of the study in Latin America with Curitiba, uh, one of the heroes anyhow in sustainable development since uh, many years, uh, was uh, rated as the highest and the best uh, with uh, unfortunately Guadalajara and Lima as um, on, on the lower end of this um, of this level, there are many other uh, green city initiatives. Um, for instance, uh, the C40 cities, climate uh, change oriented, with um, 97 member cities uh, making up 25 percent of the global economy comprised of 700 plus million people. And you see uh, the member cities uh, from Latin America. Uh, I wish uh, that uh, many more cities will join uh, this uh, great initiative. ICLEI is another uh, international um, association, local governments for sustainability. They have 2,500 cities, uh, towns and regions as members. Uh, with in 125 uh, plus countries worldwide, with 25% uh, of the global urban population and 20% of the global population as such. And uh, here, at least 400 uh, plus cities from Latin America are joining. Euro cities has a similar activity with uh, 200 uh, cities in 38 countries. 130 million people, representing 138 million people. Then the European Bank of, uh, for Reconstruction and Development, uh, they um, oriented the green city idea 
uh, towards uh, Central Europe and Central Asia, the Western Balkans, uh, the southern east, the Mediterranean region. So they have 50 cities from there uh, where they establish an, uh, a vibrant uh, network. And uh, not to forget the European Green Capital, which was uh, first time established in 2010, and we have it uh, with, until um, 2000. Uh, you see, uh, for instance, uh, Hamburg in 2011, uh, and, uh, and Essen in 2017 were green capitals of uh, Europe. If we look at uh, the German uh, situation, we have a national uh, climate uh, initiative uh, and, uh, uh, which is uh, very active. Uh, the German energy vendor, the energy transition uh, is on since 2010, but already before this program, uh, started and it funded between 2008 and 2019 uh, 16,650 projects in more than 3,650 municipalities in Germany. And uh, since 2012, there is a master plan for municipalities co creating real life experience in so called urban living labs. So, understanding the city and the green city as an urban living lab. And finally, uh, the German, German Sustainable Building Council, uh, as well, uh, is uh, doing um, uh, and promoting co production of good um, practice examples. It's a private sector driven uh, initiative. Um, it's uh, Europe's uh, largest network for sustainable building. And there's a paradigm shift for consistent attitude towards climate action. So not only building quality as such, but climate action uh, plays a big role. The certification system, buildings in local districts are uh, important, uh, good um, practice examples, toolkits are there, and uh, you can go, of course, uh, for uh, the website to see more details. If we look at uh, a specific case, uh, then you see the case of Freiburg, I mentioned it already, which has a long history. It's an integrated, um, it, it has integrated local uh, government activities uh, and uh, since a long time, since many decades. And it, it is uh, no wonder that Freiburg City Hall, the new building of the Freiburg City, which you can see here, is the biggest surplus energy building in Europe at the moment. It's not not neutral, it's energy surplus. Uh, so um, uh, a big uh, step um, ahead. And uh, this was one of the award-winning initiatives by uh, DGNB, uh, as well the Green Industry Park um, is um, uh, to be mentioned here, and specific uh, areas like Freiburg Rieselfeld, Freiburg Bourbon, um, which uh, follow this uh, agenda uh, which you see on the left side of the Green City Freiburg activities. And the Green City Freiburg activities, we took it as a, uh, an example in a project which we have just finalized, uh, where we talk about socially integrative cities, which are based in, you know, in, in very similar ways uh, on the uh, Green City uh, principles. If we look at Freiburg for more, it was a former military site, which has been uh, developed in into a showcase of uh, eco uh, development in Germany uh, with a um, uh, strongly car reduced mobility concept, the creation of a neighborhood of short distances, installation of local heat, social integration plays a big role, and the pri uh, priority of private and cooperative groups over investors. So this was a very important point. Not the investors were, develop were developing um, uh, the area, but uh, local, private, uh, and cooperative uh, groups. And there was a long uh, participation process. But of course, there are as well cases uh, from uh, Latin America as well, and uh, just uh, uh, recently, in 2018, end of 2018, America's Quarterly uh, promoted nine great urban ideas from Latin American cities going into the direction of uh, the green city development. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, there are seven uh, in this uh, chart. Uh, one is uh, from Mexico uh, with, uh, with um, uh, electric uh, scooters. 
then uh, there are two cases uh, from uh, Colombia uh, with green facades. We find that in other countries as well. And uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the bicycle highway, in a way, uh, there are waste uh, collection and waste um, uh, 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 treatment um, um, uh, processes for industrial waste. Uh, then uh, in place uh, in Lima, uh, where we have this kind of um, uh, people occupying uh, streets in underused uh, city areas uh, to create new uh, qualities. And there are as well examples in uh, Brazil and Argentina. I do not want to go into details, but come to my conclusions uh, as uh, time is running and we are getting slowly out of time. Uh, so what have we seen? The green city uh, first is a multifaceted concept. It's not a single uh, topic concept. The green city is much more than parks and gardens. And the green city uh, is a key element of the great transformation towards sustainability at the beginning of the 21st century. The success or failure of transformation towards sustainability will be decided in cities. Therefore, green cities are imperative. And there are many movements and good practice examples worldwide. Green cities are in a way urban living laboratories for sustainability and transformation. And we should understand them like that and promote them like that. However, and this, uh, we have to be realistic as well, a real breakthrough and successful mainstream still have to be achieved. Nevertheless, there is unrest, as I showed in the beginning, <clears throat> and there are strong requests for new society and uh, new social contract uh, based on social justice, equity, and wise resource management. And the SDGs and the new urban agenda promote and support the implementation of urban sustainability and the great transformation. The implementation on all levels and involving all spheres of society is decisive for success. What is important for the great uh, transformation? Uh, if we look at uh, what we have uh, talked about, then it is leadership, leadership, definitely. Game changers have to be there. I talked about the niche uh, agents and uh, actors. Good governance uh, and transparency, openness towards change and the readiness for sustainability experiments. In many cases, this is a, a, a tremendous lack uh, that um, political leaders, uh, social leaders are not ready for, a, for such experiments. The request, um, for, for uh, and the seriousness in creating just societies is important. We see the movements in many Latin American cities. We see Fridays for the Future as well as such a movement uh, as a request for creating a new society uh, based on a new social uh, contract. The transparency, trust and acceptance among the population, they have to be uh, achieved and established, and they have to grow, I think. Uh, overcoming barriers of the great transformation, especially this uh, argument, we, we cannot do it. We cannot do it because we have gone so far in one direction, so past dependency. We have to unlock favorable factors of the great transformation. For instance, green technologies, sustainable finance is discussed, green economy, changing values, knowledge promotion, and of course, networking. And we have to support niche players, mainstreaming and routinization, the interplay between change agents and an enabling uh, proactive state. And finally, um, we have to promote a productive interplay between the civil society on one hand state institutions, policymakers, and implementers, so the administration, the private sector, private businesses, academia, media, and the individual citizen. With this, I thank you very much for your, your attention 
and uh, I'm looking forward to answer your questions. Thank you. Professor Mueller, thank you very much for this um, wide opening presentation. I ask, I talk for everyone in the, in, from the attendees. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, then I will begin with the questions. Uh, we have first a twofold questions from Juan David. Um, he's asking, um, could a green city intervene in urban conflicts? Uh, he's asking this because implementing required green changes can also lead to abrupt changes. And the second part of this question would be, um, in Colombia, there was a project, Bogota Ciudad Paz, which mixed peace and sustainability. Uh, do you consider it appropriate to link them or is there a risk to turn the green city into a pocket uh, where everything fits? No, I think, um, uh, of course, uh, if, if you look at uh, what I um, have tried to promote and uh, convene uh, is uh, that uh, the green city has to be the right uh, concept if we want to really get to a change. Um, so um, the, the, the question of social conflicts um, is usually seen as uh, disruptive. Yes, we need disruptive forces uh, to get to something different. Uh, if we don't uh, have it, uh, if uh, we always go along the path which uh, uh, we have been following since ever, uh, then uh, we will not uh, achieve anything. I will uh, give you an example. I talked about Freiburg. Freiburg is um, considered the eco um, capital of, uh, of, of Germany. And uh, it has a long history in the anti-nuclear um, uh, 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 movement. Movement, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if, if this was not, the, so people gathered in the 60s and the 70s against nuclear power. And they gave uh, the then policymakers a hard time. Uh, but with this change and without this kind of movements, uh, we will not get to uh, this radical change which is needed. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, to, um, uh, have, um, to have uh, movements and, um, and, and, and strategy activities uh, which involve um, peacemaking, um, and especially in Colombia, of course, I, I know there have been uh, a lot of talks about that. Uh, we have to, to see this in all in a comprehensive way. And I think this, the, the, the green city is a synonym for uh, such activities to bring them together, not uh, to uh, create these eco islands like um, they understood in many cases still. Okay, thank you. So now we have a question from Erika. Um, she would like to know or to elaborate a little more about the rural rural areas. So what do you think about rural areas? What do what about the people who are living there? Yes, uh, well, it depends very much. If we look at uh, rural areas in um, uh, well, uh, infrastructurally developed uh, countries, uh, then uh, I think uh, we have a totally different situation like in many rural areas uh, uh, in uh, Latin America and uh, many other countries as well. So we, uh, we have to differentiate. So if we look at uh, uh, the established uh, infrastructurally well-developed countries like Germany, uh, we have a difficulty, of course, uh, with uh, the rural areas. Uh, there is a lot of... Uh, uh, people who are moving uh, there uh, for, especially in the suburban areas, uh, who, um, who, who look for, 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 for more green. Now we see um, possibilities of home uh, working, uh, working at home. Uh, the rural areas become more attractive as well for that. Uh, but uh, what do we have to take into consideration? We have to take into consideration um, that they that many people spend a lot of time uh, commuting uh, to their workplaces still, uh, that they uh, produce a lot of um, uh, CO2 emissions, uh, uh, which are um, uh, counterproductive uh, for uh, urban uh, sustainability, environmental sustainability. Uh, so that's, that's a very big problem. 
in uh, other countries, like uh, many Latin American countries. And I said, I'm at the moment in uh, Chile. And um, if, if I look at uh, rural areas uh, here, uh, then we have a totally different society as well. We have a totally different understanding of, uh, of, 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 of uh, many factors of how a society should work. Uh, and here we can see as well uh, a, a strong divide between those who are more affluent because they are extremely rich uh, rural areas, uh, wine production, uh, the, whatever uh, you take, uh, fruit production and so on with international export um, versus the rural workers. And uh, we have in a way uh, the same social conflicts uh, in the rural areas. And of course, uh, if we do not integrate uh, that, uh, and if we do not change agriculture, the, let's say con uh, the concern about uh, water, yeah? water as a private good in Chile, for instance, is a terrifying uh, idea for the future as well. Yeah? Uh, where, let's say the, 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 the uh, growers, uh, the, the, the farmers, uh, they use the water and the neighboring uh, villages. They don't have water for their daily life. Uh, so I think a lot of conflicts will come up uh, in, the, in the future. Uh, and uh, we are well advised to take that into consideration and to give more uh, uh, awareness uh, to uh, these uh, developments in the, in, which are coming up uh, in, 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 in policies uh, at all and overall. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, this is from Juan Camilo. Um, he's asking, many, if not most, big Latin American cities have grown without any, any urban planning. And inside the cities, there are not many big spaces for nature, which strategies can be used to re redirect the continued growth of these cities towards green transformation, and if I can add to this question, uh, what was done good in Curitiba in comparison, perhaps, to Lima and Guadalajara? Yes, um, so that, that's, a, that's a very important point. Uh, many cities, indeed, they have not uh, uh, grown according to a concept. In many cases, uh, we have even independent municipalities. So if we look at uh, certain metropolitan areas, uh, then we see that uh, we have uh, 30 plus, 50 plus different actors uh, who have all the same rights and independent rights, and there is no regional body which would be able to coordinate anything. Uh, and uh, I made uh, some years ago a study uh, on Santiago with uh, uh, all the mayors who have a council even, but it was never used uh, in a way uh, to really discuss the major uh, topics uh, as well uh, of, of, of joint concern like environment yeah? uh, for a long time. Now it's, uh, sometimes it's a bit going up and down and up and down, but um, uh, we have this situation in many uh, cities. So. Uh, I would like to refer to one of the examples which I did not talk about, uh, but um, which um, I uh, had on one of the slides. It's Robert Schmidt in the, uh, in the rural area, one of the industrial areas in the 19th century. So in, 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 he was, he was a, a person in the city of Essen, in the planning department. He was responsible for planning in Essen. And um, he said, well, if we grow, if every city will grow in the industrialization process, then uh, we are going to uh, be one big area uh, without green area. So he tried to convince, and he successfully convinced his um, his follower, his, his his peers in the other uh, cities in the neighboring cities to come up with a a voluntary concept where they decided about which kind of areas could be and should be taken uh, and be kept uh, kept free of building. And this is still a network which is uh, here uh, at the moment. When you go to the rural area, you find extremely many um, green areas uh, nowadays. So coming back to what 
can be done uh, is um, that um, we, we, we have to have such persons in the cities uh, who get together and see the difficulties uh, and we have to re-establish green areas. So this means in the further development, uh, we, we have to do it. Closing streets, uh, Seoul is a good case. Um, I did not show it to you, but uh, uh, they took off a whole big um, street to create and recreate a small stream again, to make a recreation area in the center of the city. Uh, such area, such such initiatives are necessary, and uh, we cannot do without. Uh, Lima is um, a good example in a in a way that they um, try to uh, re-establish the green um, uh, the, 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 the 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 green shore, which uh, is which which existed many years ago, uh, and which was lost uh, due to many different. Um, uh, circumstances. Uh, so they are trying to do that again uh, with some success. But we have to see, for instance, if we talk about Lima, Lima is a, is a city in a desert. And uh, we have to be careful uh, talking about uh, green areas. Uh, we have to talk about a green city in the way of, um, uh, of, of social interaction, of uh, uh, all these um, aspects um, of the great, great transformation which is needed. Uh, which I mentioned. So, Professor Mila, thank you again for answering these questions. There are uh, quite a lot more questions here in the chat, but unfortunately, our time is over. However, we do have uh, some it's options. On, <laughs> contact me uh, via email. Uh, I'm sure um, if you, um, uh, at the end of the presentation, there is my email address. Uh, so please uh, contact me and I'm uh, very pleased to uh, stay in contact or, or answer your questions. Thank you, Professor Mila. Uh, we would like to I invite you as well to our meetings here in the in the platform if you have time, so the assistants can uh, talk to you directly uh, through chat or through private private uh, uh, meetings. Um, thank you again uh, for the presentation and thank you our assistants for for their questions. If you are seeing us through YouTube, remember that this uh, event is live now in, in Hubilo. So you can go to the link below and then and register and take part in the discussion that we also have along today and do some networking together. So Professor Mila, thank you again and have right. a nice day. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. All the best. Okay. Bye.